What's going on, world? It's your boy Tigo B, and right now I'm in apartments with Pale. Try. Hey, Pale. Meet me at the apartment. <laughs> Yo, you already know this your boy Pale live from DJ House Studios, and we're in the apartment with Pale. Meet me in the apartments. Listen, I love my shit at ATL. Only thing I love more than ATL is the west side of Atlanta. Shout out to Bankhead, Rest Easy Swall, Long Little Swall. I mean, Long Little um, Shout Low, Long Little Buddy. Listen, man, the city is really special. I think it's a lot of special things happen here, man. I think the energy, the, um, what is it called, the kinetic energy? What the hell is kinetic energy? What the fuck is that? What the energy called when the shit is? It's when we move forward. Uh huh. When you drive in the car, the momentum. Up, momentum is. The, the momentum. I kind of energy. I'm gonna make my own shit up. Fuck all that shit. These words. I make my own shit up. God damn it. The I kind of energy that's been going on here in Atlanta. I think that we connect with every city. I don't think it's another city in the United States of America who really connects with everybody in every city. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's special. And I think that the things that um, the culture, let me say the culture. Our culture here, man, I think that, you know, especially the past decade has definitely been culture driven by Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? But the thing about our city is that we welcome people from outside in here. You know what I'm saying? We welcome different things. You know what I'm saying? We pick up different shit from different people. You know what I'm saying? The way he do shit, the way they do shit over here. And we incorporate that and sh we incorporate that shit into what we do. You see what I'm saying? And I think that bond creates even more bigger energy. You know what I'm saying? To create more superstars, to create more situations. I don't think it's a better city to go to to become something than Atlanta. Uh, movie director, actor, scorer, engineer, rapper, singer. Uh, shit, if you got a kid, you just ain't want you. In football, you better bring him here. Basketball, you better bring him here. You know what I'm saying? We having the top athletes in the nation. You know what I'm saying? I think that's special. You know what I'm saying? And I, I and the reason I be always speak on that shit is because I, I just want to share that with this platform. I just want to share all the different type of things in culture. You know what I'm saying? This is not, we're not, this is not a platform that's based off industry, music, or, you know, sports. You know, we do everything. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it's, I think it's a message in everything. Um, Every artist that I have here is something that somebody's going to see, they're going to take something from it, it's going to help them. You know what I'm saying? And I think everybody should do that in your daily thing. Try to do something to help somebody. You know what I'm saying? Or just some kind of message. Don't give a damn help or not. You know what I'm saying? How many times your mama told you don't do something? And yeah, I kept doing it. You know what I'm saying? Only thing that she's going to keep doing is just keep feeding you the information until you can be like, you know what, I get it now. You know what I'm saying? So that's what this platform is. You know what I'm saying? And I got another guest here, you know, with a lot of ties to my side of town. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give a shout out to my next guest, T Go B. Yeah. Yeah, we're in the building. Yeah. 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 I fuck with the niggas who listen to me. I fuck with the niggas who fuck with me. If you ain't fuck with me, I ain't necessarily saying fuck you. I'm just going to say, I'm going to keep doing what I do until you want to fuck with me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This shit is for the streets, and everybody ain't into what I'm into. Fact. You see what I'm saying? Fact. Everybody might not want to listen to what I got to say. I might not be missing enough. I might not be saying this shit enough. I got a lot of people who be like, Paula, why you don't talk about this shit? Why you don't talk about what's going on with the police and shit, locking everybody up? Listen, man, I don't do podcasts for a nigga to hear my, my side of the story. Yeah. It was fuck, nigga. How I feel is how I feel. And I don't expect everybody to feel how I feel. Mm -hmm. But one thing I know is that everybody got a story. You know what I'm saying? And niggas don't listen. Niggas don't read books no more. Ain't no more go sit down and read a book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't no telling no nigga. And, and I'm not talking about everybody because people still read. I speak to the people who from where I'm from. Who grew up in the shit that I grew up in, the poverty and in, 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 in environments that I grew up in. Niggas ain't reading no books. Yeah. Forget what them young niggas do. But they'll open that fucking phone up and go to YouTube. Right about that. And they'll watch, they'll watch every single motherfucking episode. Hold every fucking 30 minutes, every hour of that bitch. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you keep talking enough real shit. They gonna soak up the game. Start soaking up the game. 
You see what I'm saying? And that's what this shit is. That's why I like when people like you reach out to me, you know what I'm saying, to come tell, you know what I'm saying, how you got to where you are, how you, who you are. I, th- I, don't, I don't take that shit lightly, you know what I'm saying? So shit like you saying, man, Paul, appreciate you having me. Nigga, I'm saying appreciate you being here. You know what I'm saying? Nigga be, what Jay-Z say? Nigga be anywhere in the real, but you're here with me. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, for real, for real. Yeah. Let's do this. For the people who know you, for the people who know of you, people who don't know of you. Yeah. I always like to get get a chance for my viewers to know the people who sit down, the artists who sit down with me. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Because I always feel like the more people know you. Yeah. The more they fuck what you do. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Like it it don't I feel like people don't like people because of the music they make no more. It ain't back then it was nigga, you could be the ugliest motherfucker in the world. That nigga can rap. Yeah. And that's all that matter. Yeah. Now it ain't about that. It's more of image than this music. Now music got something to do with it, but it's more of image. It's a lot of niggas can't rap, but niggas fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? Like I fuck with Soldier Boy. I I fuck with a shouter. Yeah. They can't rap though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. But he'll make a hit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he'll make a hit. Catchy. You know why? Yeah. Because people know him. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So it make what he do more. It's understandable. Like, nigga, that soldier boy, he, he, this how he gonna be. I fuck with that shit. It's entertaining. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for real, for real. So let's go back to where you from, where you grew up at. That's a bit, man. So, uh, you know, once again, I go by the name of Tigo, Tigo B. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm actually a, a first generation American, though, from my whole family from. West Africa, Sierra Leone, you know, so, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's interesting where I grew up, you know, so I'm growing up with that background with my parents trying to make sure that I, I go to school, make sure that I become a doctor or a lawyer, that's how African parents are, you see what I'm saying? Hey, and, y'all ain't gonna bullshit, y'all gonna be some. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what they were trying to do, but at the same time, I'm in Raleigh, you know, so, you know, Raleigh got a lot of gang culture and whatnot. I don't know how familiar you are with North Carolina, but... For sure, I went to college yeah. at Concord. Oh, okay, okay, that's a bit. Yeah, so you in the solid area, so I get it. Yeah, but... So with that being said, you know, I had just the exposure of many different worlds, and Raleigh's also a melting pot, so... Sure. You know, every school in Raleigh, it, it's mixed. Every So everybody go to school. Yeah, if you, you're going to get, get a lot of niggas. You're going to get a lot of niggas on the New York swag. Yeah, you're going to yeah, get a yeah. lot of niggas on the Baltimore swag. Everything. You're going to get a lot of niggas on the Midwest. You're going to get a few niggas on the South. I know about the area very well. No, nah, no, nah, for sure. It's yeah. all, all of that. You know what I mean? So it's really a melting pot. So I just, I, I grew up exposed to everything, you know, and especially when it when it comes to the music side of things. I really didn't get into music till later on in my life, you know. I was in the money. I was in the hustling. I was in the girls. That's what I was on. That's what I was doing. You see what I'm saying? So it wasn't until I was like 20 that one of my partners, you know, I used to be a blood or whatnot. So I was I was with them. And, you know, one of them was like, yo, uh, we recording. We're going to do some music today. I'm like, oh, for real? And they're like, yeah. And this back when it wasn't, everybody wasn't rapping. By way of this was, from the perspective, they want people to follow. Yeah, this is a 2000. Like 2008, something like that. Yeah, so everybody went rapping right then, you feel me? So <clears throat> they were like, come on, just try it out. So whole time, you know, I've been smoking and rapping with my with my homeboys. You they know, kicking the shit. Everybody yeah, do you know, that. Everybody do that. Everybody you feel what I'm that. saying? Yeah. Yeah, you know, sure. I was good at it, but I ain't never think about it like something Making that it, I Making it something I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah, you see what I'm saying? So then, boom, after that, I, I go in there, I do my little thing, and everybody like, boy, you, you hard, though. Like, you tough. I'm like, damn, for real. So then, you know, you build a little confidence. So every day I'm just at it, and I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I link up with the with the folk in my area that's really doing their thing. And and uh, one of them was my boy E. Sud. You know E. Sud from my sure. way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, he in Charlotte now. Yeah, yeah. You already know. That's, yeah. my, that's one of my best friends. You see what I'm saying? So he the one who really was like, nah, you really need to do it. You really need to do it. So, boom, I started really getting it, getting it popping. Then uh, after that, you know. I started getting the street music going, like the the whole city was messing with me. Then uh, I came down here and started moving around. Boom, I'm at the studio. I bump into Flocker, you know, and then me and Flocker, you know, we were just chopping it up about some about some street stuff. You know what I'm saying? Then he heard the music. He was like, oh, damn, you hard. Boom, he hopped on one of my singles, and then that, that was the first thing that started to go up for me. You know what I'm saying? Boom, so, oh, shit. Yeah. That's, that's a hell of a goddamn introduction to this shit. Yeah. Okay, let's start back. Growing up preteen, yeah. What was the type of things that you were seeing that was pulling your interest? 
Man, you know what? That's a good question. That was pulling my interest. Basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was probably one of the main things. Basketball was really, really pulling my interest. And music was, too. But just from, like, you know, the fan standpoint, you know, and again, because being of West African origin, like, there was a lot of, like, Calypso music. My my parents were playing a lot of reggae music. So, like, my the way I listened to music was just different. You know what I'm saying? I was just a real rhythmic dude. And I even connected that to basketball. You know what I'm saying? I realized that basketball is kind of like a dance, too. That's why I liked it so much. Because if you nice, if you cross with somebody, it's really like a G. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to really sure. have rhythm no, sure. to make it happen. So that's why I realized I was good at it because I just naturally had that. So really, my the earlier in my life was more so just trying to get that hooping thing together. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's what I say really pulled my interest initially. At what point was it? Did your interest start to move from basketball, start getting into start getting interested in making money? That's a good question right there. So, boom, I would say it was, like, right when I was in middle school, like. 13, 14, right when you turned teenager? Yeah, yeah, right around then because, you know, like, shoot, like, I wasn't, I wasn't dressing the best. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll never forget when I went to school. I was telling my partner about I went to school with the Spalding shoes on and, you know, they ate me up. You feel me? So okay, I'm like, <laughs> I had on the the Elijah ones. You know, what I ain't never. Let me tell you some shit. Yeah. Let me tell you some shit now. Yeah. For real, let me tell you some shit. Yeah, I had a pair of them bitches too, right? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I had the Elijah yeah. one jersey, right? Yeah, and I've got the Elijah. And I, I'm just one of the people that I always always say that I don't know. I just always wanted to be different. Yeah, and I just thought that that. That different was cool at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had the Kim Elijah one jersey. I went and got the fucking Elijah one. Because you had the white red one. Yep, that was it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a big ass thing with a spot side. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. got on your they ass, dog. Yeah, no, they got on me, boy. Hold on, let me ask you this. <laughs> they ate me. Did they just, did you pick the shoes out or did they just buy you the shoes? I really picked them out. <laughs> okay, take me through it. Take me through it. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, really. Because you got to understand, like, the way my, my people's mind set up. Like, you African, you so they, they're like, nigga, we ain't getting fuck this yeah, shit. It's, not it's cool. all this money on these shoes yeah. and stuff like that. You and it's a professional saying? nigga, for real, who playing the league. Yeah, for real. yeah. So, you know, boom. I'm like, all right, cool. That's what I'm going to do. So then, like I said, I come to school. I'll never forget it. You know, they like, boy, uh, where you get them from? I'm like, I got them from Foot Locker. It was cap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, it was all cap. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was all cap. You know, they ate me that day, and I just never forget. I was like, nah, I ain't, I can't go out like that again. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't. So, yeah, for real. So, it wasn't too much longer after that. I was I was on the west side of Raleigh, and I was, like, hollering at my, my boy Big Dookie. Yeah. And, you know, he had them bags. And, you know, I was like, boy, I got I to gotta figure this out. Like you gotta figure out the control. So, your introduction to hustling was because you wanted to get some money to buy some shoes. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I just wanted. I just wanted to get fly. That was my whole thing. I wanted. To, I wanted to turn up. You know. And you knew way. that this is the fastest way for me to get some money. For sure. Get some shit. For sure. For sure. And, and right, I say right, right before that. I like had some candy and sell candy and stuff like you that. You was like already. I, pick, I was no, already. I'm gonna tell one thing about. Was, I'm gonna tell you one thing yeah. about Africans. Yeah. They some hustling motherfuckers. That's a fact. Always. That's a fact. They some hustling motherfuckers. Yeah. They gonna do some goddamn hustling shit always. Yeah. So that, that part has always been in you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when that came, you just like, you know what? I'm already hand to hand used to dealing with people. Yeah. Let me go ahead and goddamn get me some shoes. Boom. Bang. Because like, cause around that time, that's when I just fought, start, first started smoking. And then now I'm smoking out gate. I'm having to buy it. So I'm like, nah, I need to be able to supply my habit and why not make some money off of it? My mind just automatically went to that. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, there's other people around me that they just want to smoke it. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to try to give me some money. So, How did you start smoking weed? So then, how old is you when you in 6th, 7th grade? I think you were like 12, yeah. 13. So something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like around that. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, when so, I started smoking, I was about 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So around there, like that 12, 13. Yeah, so then by that by by the eighth grade, that's when I was like, okay, like now I'm starting to move around. Oh, you about fourteen now. You get enough age now. You you know how you understand the shit. Yeah, you yeah, seeing yeah. shit. You digesting shit way more now. You got them concentrating on. You understand it now for real. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying. So yeah, so I just started. I started hustling. Like 
And you know, to be honest with you, I ain't never really had too many problems. Like I was, I'm just good with money. You know, from that, like for real, for real, from that day forward, I ain't even had to learn how to save money. I just knew that I never wanted to feel like that again. Now y'all niggas know how to save money. That shit in your blood too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some Africans know how to save some goddamn money. Yeah, yeah. That shit in your blood too. You might not understand it. You might just (laughs) think it's goddamn it. No, but y'all ain't know how to save some money too. Yeah. I know I got a few homies from Africa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you then know I'm my religion is African. West African, actually. You know, Europe. So I I understand a shitload of what be going on. And that shit just is something that is bred in you to saving money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Boom. So you're doing that. Are you still at the time you still hooping? Yeah, I am though. You know, I'm still hooping, but it was actually that that stopped the hooping because I got I got caught selling weed. You know, where you caught selling weed? How you get caught? High school, you know. Man, I was just it was dumb. I'm talking about I was out. It was lunchtime. I'm outside, like like right outside on the campus, smoking over there by the trees. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of us. Then I come back in. I'm smelling like it. You know what I'm saying? I walk by the principal. You know, the principal, smell me, you need to come in the office, boom. You know, I ain't I ain't really had the time to move, but I, I so I walked into the office and as soon as I walked in, I threw my book back down, took the sack, threw it in the trash can. You see what I'm saying? It was like a smooth little move. How you did the shit with all <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> took that motherfucker off it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, it's about yeah, smooth little move. Matthew so, Johnson, that motherfucker. Yeah, so then you know, they running through my stuff. Where is it? I know you got it on. You did it. like nah, I don't know what you're talking about. So I think I'm good. Go pick up my book bag, put it on the white lady in front. She was like, I, I think I saw him throw something in the trash can when he got in here. And they went, opened up that trash can, just all the little sacks. You know what I'm saying? Just had a little ounce bagged up. Mm. And, yeah. You oh, with so. bag no more basketball, introduction to manhood. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. So, you know. Damn, now you could at least, see, I used to go to, the, we had some little houses behind my school. Yeah. I used to go to the house and shit. We had a little cut. I just yeah. created a little trap in the cut. I used to just go in the cut. Yeah, and yeah. We used to come back to school. I used to spread the blunt powder. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know the blunt Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking the about. Baby, you know, the yeah, baby yeah. powder kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blunt powder, yeah. baby powder kind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Come. shit. I used to keep that shit. The baby powder kind. Spray that yeah. baby powder kind. Here, hit my hand, hit my hand. Everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody be outside <laughs> doing this yeah, shit before yeah. we walk into school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, for real, for real. Boom. So, yeah. No more basketball. Boom. Still hooping. Still, still hooping. practice with the team sometimes. But I'm just not playing. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You still, it's, it's about time like that. You're hanging on the thread with this motherfucker. Yeah, I mean. You're really you know, hanging like, on it because you like, like it. The vision, yeah, Zach, I'm just loving it. The vision of playing for you and seeing anything, that's just gone now. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it, now I'm, it's just fun to hoop. It's just fun because everybody know I can hoop. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a thing. Boom. Then, uh, you know, now I'm like, okay, am I going to make it out of high school? I don't even know. GPA low. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? My folk pressing me at this point. I'm selling dope now. You feel what I'm saying? So it's a whole nother thing. I'm just trying to get some money. And I'm wanting to go to the A and T. You know what I'm saying? In Greensboro. You know, A and T is a turned up college. For sure. So you know, from where I'm from, everybody like, yeah, you gotta go to A and T. That's where the girls are. Raleigh State popping too. <clears throat> Say what now? Raleigh too. Raleigh. Yeah. Talk about, yeah, I mean Raleigh popping, but I'm again like I'm not understand you're talking what you're about just, NC State. Yeah, I got yeah. what you're saying, but yeah, but nah, not like I'm just keep it hot yeah. in in North Carolina, yeah. A&T where it's at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I was trying to do. So, you know, by the grace of God, I graduated. I went. Uh, I applied for a and I got in there. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah. You applied for that bitch. You got in there. What you got? The grants? Nah. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. So what we did? I figured it out. My um, my my people. Was saying if I could make it through the first year, they'd pay for it, and then if we could, we just continue doing it like that. You see what I'm saying? So then I just had to come up with the rest of the money as time went on. So that's good. That's some that's some that's some high shit right there. Though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For real, for real. For sure. Yeah. Then that's another thing. Like the the story of my family. You know, something I always talk to my partner about. Like you know, my family came here. <clears throat> my parents. You know, they was staying in the projects, bro. By the time I by the time I turned 25, my parents bought themselves, and I've been out of the crib, a half million dollar home. So, you know, they really worked it up from nothing. Absolutely nothing. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, they I really feel like just subconsciously, I really just learned that from them because my parents ain't never asked nobody for nothing. 
even it's only now that I'm older that I find out there was time we were about to lose the house and things like that. They ain't never showed me that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never know that. Mm-hmm. You know, the only times I realized, like, okay, like maybe we could get a little more money or something like that is when I couldn't get certain things I wanted. But outside of that, you know, I'm I'm eating and everything, you know. So they never they did a good job of just making sure everything was always on point. They knew you were hustling. Yeah, well, yeah. For for instance, before I went to school, like it was probably like six months before I went to the school, you know. And they been knew about the weed, and they ain't know about the dope. You see what I'm saying? So I never. How the fuck they knew you were selling weed? Shit, my dumb ass just had been doing dumb shit. I was upstairs sometime. I'd be in the house smoking. Like you know, when you a teenager, like you just do dumb stuff. You don't be giving. Them so you like fuck that shit and fire one up in the house. Yeah, and you were gone. <laughs> yeah, I was gone. I right? my mama like that. Yeah, I yeah, don't smoke in the front porch, back porch, side of that motherfucker. Gone. I was upstairs. I was talking about I was upstairs. I, you know, and I just put something like up under the door. I was just tripping. I maybe even smoke one with the window open. That's what it was. The window was open. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was doing. But you know, shit. I just yeah, I was dumb. So anyway, uh, and then you know, plus the, the shit that happened, happened in school. school. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, they they figured that. You know, but then you graduated. Came. Yeah. How many years till you graduate? 14? You graduated what age? From college? I mean, from, no, from high school? 14, no. Nah. Oh, Started dude, with the weed oh, yeah, at 14 about, oh. when you graduate. I guess 16. 16, two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I money went fast enough. Weed money went fast enough. My partners put me on. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, yeah, this right here. You know, I, it's going to be more than me just buying systems and, and wheels. You know what I'm saying? We finna buy the cars and some old things now. You feel what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I just... uh. <clears throat> I got, I got, I got locked into it. But anyway, I never forget. You know, I was gone somewhere. I came back home, and I seen the uh, checkers. You know, I had a, a checkers game in my room. Like, you know, like the box the checkers come in. I used to stash the dope in there because I wouldn't. Who gonna look in the checker thing? But I guess my mom. You know, how your parents is sometimes they just come in there and search for stuff. So I came downstairs. I seen the, the checkers thing. I'm like, okay, shit. I must know what time it is. They open it up, you know, about four or five grand there, the dope right there. <clears throat> and they're like, what's going on? I'm like, you see what's going on. I'm about to be out the house anyway. You ain't got to worry about it. They just kind of scratched their head, and that was it. It wasn't even, it really wasn't nothing more. Because at that point, even if they had put me out, I was already straight. I would have gone in and figured it out, you know. And then after that, boom, I, I went to Greensboro. And that's where I started my music. What made you go to Greensboro? a t Oh, you say you went to you went yeah, to yeah, school? Yeah, yeah, A&T, yep. And that's mm-hmm. where you start doing your music at? Yep. And why everybody start doing music in college? I started doing music in college. I think it's just like when you, especially in that time, you know, like before that, like I ain't, it, it wasn't a thing to be going to the studio or none of that. Like, you know, like, again, that was just my first time being exposed to it. And Riley, like, it was a couple people that rap, but, you know, that was more like just day thing. Like, I don't remember no hustlers rapping, though. No, nah, if you rap back you know then, saying? you was really a rapper. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Been, yeah, I don't remember more, no Yeah, you wanted to rapper. be a rapper. Yeah, I was yeah. I was trying to get some money at the time. So yeah, I, wasn't, I went to school to get some money, for sure. For yeah, sure. so I wasn't even thinking about it. money in North that. Carolina, y'all. I'm telling you. I'm yeah, just thinking yeah, about yeah. it now. I'm just, don't think I'm wandering off, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I don't even, Carolina. I really don't even. So yeah, anyway, after that. You thinking too. Yeah, yeah, for real. So yeah, so now I'm in school, you know, um. And I'm really, like, just fucking off. You know, I really went for the girls. And I really went to turn up. And then, yeah, and then I did turn up. Like, I, I got on that music. After that first year, look, I got I got caught with the weed again. In college? Yeah, I got caught with the Damn. weed again. How you get caught this time, dog? Bro, it was crazy. I'm talking about, <clears throat> all right, this is, I'm going to make the long story short. I'm outside the no, calf. No, you tell you how you want to. No, for real. It. Yeah, no, for real. It was a, I'm outside the, the calf. It's me and a whole bunch of, of my homeboys. Somebody break into the calf, rummaging through the calf, doing all this stuff. We just downstairs up there looking at it. So we just a witness. That's what happened, right? So now I'm over in my dorm room one day, and, you know, people just come by, knock. You know, I'm already knowing what it is. I'm cutting the hair, too, in there. You know what I'm saying? So it's either that or the, or the weed. Boom. God, right, then you cut you down. You hustle, hustle. We didn't learn how to cut hair. Oh, that was in, in high school. Okay. Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had to figure it out. Yeah. Cause, I mean, my pops wasn't going to take me every week to spend $10 to get a cut. It just won't finna happen. Oh, you been on your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Somebody knock on the door. Yeah, yeah, they knock on the door. 
So I'm just, I just open it. Cause I'm like, oh yes, yeah, somebody. I open this damn detective. I'm like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? So like, I couldn't just shut the door back in his face, you know. So he was like, uh, yeah, I want to talk to you about the, the thing that happened over at the calf. Cause they seen us on the camera. Could that we were witnesses to somebody breaking into the calf. But when I opened the door, it was some weed right there. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So he already seen it. So I had to think quick. It was just like, it was just one little bag, though. Just one bag. So he like, yeah, you got some more of that? I had a lot of it. But in my pocket, I had like four bags. I was like, yeah, I got some more. Pulled out the four. That's it, man. You can search the room if you need to. He just took that. He ain't never searched the room. That gave him enough for him to just leave it alone. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Told him, you know, I ain't know what the fuck. It was some looked like some crack here broken in that motherfucker. I really don't know what happened at the calf. You see what I'm saying? That day you're like, look, <clears throat> we ain't going to get you kicked out of school, but you're going to get kicked off this campus. I'm like, all right, cool anyway. You ain't got me a spot. Now I'm a sophomore in college, got my own spot. I'm starting to do this music, put a little studio in there. Then I dropped out, kept doing the music. Name started ringing. What was, your first, what was your first aha moment doing music at that time? I was ro I was rocking with some guys, and I felt like they fronted on me. Mm -hmm. We was doing music together, and they took me off a verse, and I ain't like that shit. The person I was then, I ain't like that shit at all. Mm -hmm. So I went with my homeboy 30, and I'm like, man, send me a beat, and I just spazzed on it. You know what I'm saying? And then from that from that day forward, you know, they heard that track. They heard how, how I sounded on that track. Then my man sent it to DJ Chuck T, so out to Chuck T. And it went on his mixtape, and it just started. That was my aha moment. Like, oh, okay, like I tap into me getting pissed off on these records. Then, yeah, you yeah. remember that shit? I you see your face expression when you said that. I tell you, nigga, send me a beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, I, I was pissed off. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So then it just turned, it, it moved something in me. Then after that, I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm better than everybody that's out here. That's how I felt. I knew that, though. Couldn't nobody tell me different. I knew I was better than everybody that was out there at the time. What was, what made you start going outside the city to fuck with people? The reason I ask this is because a lot of people from a lot of towns, I don't, I don't know what it is, but they usually don't go out of town and fuck with people. They're like, just be like, hey, I'm going to stay here. This is, you see what I'm saying? I ain't want to. At that time, you know, I'm like, bro, I'm going to pop from NC. Like, I don't got to go nowhere. Da, 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 da. That's how I felt. You know, it was really Sud. Sud, it was it. Sud, like, bro, let's go down here. Because Sud was trying to move down to Atlanta at the time. It's before he was streets. It's before all of that. So, he's like, man, let's go down. So, I'm with Sud. You know, that's my partner. So, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to go down there. And then that's what it was. So, Sud just, he always wanted to move around. And I was cool to do that. And then, you know, so back then, I met Camp back then. You know, I met Schooly them back then. Uh, Flocker back then. You know, so I met a lot. Uh, Sayari, met him back then. Got him oh my on my God. first, uh, my, I got him on my first That's, tape. And you know probably, what I'm saying? And nigga, he's probably, because I don't know everybody, but I'm probably, so he's probably the most underrated lyricist out right now. For sure, and nah, it's already tough, you know bro. And that's what I'm saying. Real, I got him on my first tape way back then. You see what I'm saying? So, I, like, I was amongst everybody who's still popping right now, you yeah. know. And to, and to keep it hot, I know for a fact, had I not took a three-year hiatus to get my mind right and really tap into spirituality, that I would have been took off, like, with everybody else. But I'm actually glad it happened like that. No, nah, for sure. You saying you had it took that three month hiatus? Three year. Three years. Three years. Three years. What was making you just feel like I just need to just take a step back? Here? I mean, I'm gonna be honest. So it was like I had the song with Flocker called "We Got It." It was moving. You know, it it was giving. Cause at that time, North Carolina didn't have like uh, a person who. Cause this was before Cole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't have that person that was, like, really turning up. So I had that We, we Got It song. So that was on World Star. Everybody like, oh, yeah, yeah, this it. You know, so everybody knowing what it is, screaming know what it is down here. Everybody, they they getting familiar with who I am as an individual. But at the same time, bro, you know, I by this point in my life, like, 
I think inside I'm just tired. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm tired of just the the club. I'm tired of beefing with niggas. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? Just just my mom just a aware dude in general. So then I come across meditation. You know, I'm just somebody when YouTube first got started popping, I just used to research things. Like, you know, after I'm back at the apartment just chilling, <clears throat> smoke a blunt and just research. That's all I'm doing I'm on YouTube. Like, YouTube changed my life, really. So I'm researching meditation. I find out about meditation. And they talking about the third eye and how you can have these experiences, this, that, and the third. So the way I'm set up, I just train myself to meditate. And the fourth time meditating, I had an experience. And that experience was enough for me to say, you know what, I'm not going to live the life I'm living no more. I'm about to just focus on this meditation because it felt better to me than anything I had ever felt in life up to that point. So, you know, I was just like, I'm about to quit doing this music. I'm about to focus on this because this feels better than what anything else has ever given me. It's different, ain't it? It's, and now it's amazing. You know, and then... Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Ain't nothing like a spiritual connection. Nah. People mistake religion for spiritual connection. You, uh, everybody does. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, 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 and then like and then like knowing when you know you know. Absolutely. And I know. Yeah. Like absolutely. I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, say what you I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't experience that. It's that's that's some yeah. That's a whole nother conversation. It is a whole nother conversation, <laughs> you know. So that's for what real, I did, real. man. So I did that. I switched up where I was living. I changed my diet. You know what I'm saying? I gave up smoking. I gave up drinking. I'm talking about I did a, a whole 180 to where everybody that was around me is just like, yo, buddy, strange now. You know what I'm saying? Even I come down here during this time, and I still go fuck with tech. And Al and them street is that boys, and they you know be joking and shit, fucking with me, cause they knew I was on some different type of time, cause they was they was no, I was with them, you know. With Travis they seen the tra- all they, seen, they seen the seen formation, the, yeah, they, they seen, seen the, transformation, they seen the transformation. Yeah. So they like you know when they see me, they bow and stuff like that, like messing with me. But that's that's how real it was. Like mm-hmm. music, I'm good on that. So then I went to China, and I even practiced with the monks. You know what I'm saying? So I came back teaching meditation and all these things. So. I'm glad you went to China. Oh, my dog, man. Rest easy, my dog, V. I used to listen. I, I got him home. He yeah. was fucking highly intelligent. Like, one of the, one, probably one of the smartest street niggas I ever met. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't talk about to the street, to the whatever you ask, whatever you say. He probably done done that shit. For sure. This nigga highly intelligent. Yeah. Man, this nigga used to argue. And I used to tell him, he used to say, China ain't real. Like, he be like, man, that shit real, bro. <laughs> he be like, man, that shit ain't real. They going somewhere else. Oh yeah, that's you what he was saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, for real, for real. <laughs> what the hell made you go to fucking China? What the hell said go to China? That's a good question. So look, I, like I said, I'm in meditation. I had an experience, right? Mm-hmm. And I had that experience, and then I'm watching videos on YouTube, and I see this master on YouTube doing some old supernatural stuff. But what he doing? I'm experiing, so I'm already knowing. What the hell, nigga? Do this. talk to me. Let, this is go. We talking. Gonna, yeah, in one second. What do you do? I'm gonna, right, I'm go gonna tap back right, in. Right. I'm already knowing if I talk to other people about this. They're gonna think like this. They're gonna crazy. think I'm tripping. So it's not even no need in doing that. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? So, you got the right one today, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what I did was, I went, got in contact with one of his students. I had to do some digging, and then they were like, "Yo, that yeah, he no longer teaches, but there's another." master in China that still teaches what you witness. I'm like, all right, well, get me in contact with them. They did that, and then I was on a plane to China three weeks later. Just that simple. Shit. Yeah. It was a long travel to the uh, to the mountains where they were. Yeah, well, I, it's a 14-hour flight, landed, stayed in a hostel, and then it wasn't a long trip, but we would go into the mountains every day and meditate at, for a total of eight hours a day. You know, so, like, it changed me, bro. Like, I'm just not the same person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not. You know, it's just like, it's kind of like looking at yourself as a three-year-old and then looking at yourself as a 30-year-old. Man, you know, it's just you're a completely changed individual. Even boy, from, from 25 to, no, from yeah, from 25 to 28, I was just a whole nother it, being. It ain't necessary that you're a whole different person. There's different ways that your mind opens. Shit. Absolutely. That the regular person think that people make you think crazy if you think this shit. Mm-hmm. I don't want people to tap into that energy. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> you see not what I'm saying? 
For sure. And the people who doing this, the people who, who hold it sacred. So they do the right shit. Yeah. That shit ain't made for everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. That, shit, sure. that, shit ain't, that, shit ain't, that shit ain't made for everybody. But you know, low-key, I think that's what everybody really, really, I think that's what everybody really searching for. You know what I'm saying? They look for it through smoking the blunt. They look through it. For it through doing a line, cause when you doing these things, you trying to feel something. They ain't disciplined enough, bro. You know what I'm saying? Disciplined enough. No, nah, I mean not as a fact, but still, when you drink, when you take a shot, you trying to feel something. Yeah, you trying, trying to change. To you trying yeah. to change your nah, emotional sure. state. Hey, yeah, when you definitely. go get some money, you trying to feel something. Nah, All these things trying to change your emotional definitely. state. Nah, you definitely. know what I'm saying? Nah, so definitely. it's like, nah, definitely. but then it never lasts though. It'll it'll work for a little bit, but then you want to go do more. You want to go do more. You you said you just want to get out your parents' house and get yeah, you an nah, apartment. Yeah, now nah, you now nah, you off track. Now nah, the vision ain't the vision. Now nah, you lost in the matrix. You, that's what it is. Lost you see what I'm saying? No, and that's what sure. that's how it goes from from people who ain't getting no money to billionaires. It's the same. You know what I'm saying? Like they, it's a place you have to go to that people not willing to go because people ain't disciplined enough to go there. Like even like you were saying, like in the meditation thing, dog. Yeah. Before you even learn how to meditate, you gotta understand it real. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know about how hard that. it is to make niggas think that shit's real that they can't understand. Yeah, man, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Why you think I a lot of people know. don't have faith? People can't understand it. Absolutely. So you know I'm saying, so they get fucked up in this. God, oh, please, goddamn, please hit me out this. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? People don't move with it. They don't understand it. They don't believe in it. They don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, but when you tap into what you're talking about, like it's it's a different perspective, mental. You know what I'm saying? But when you know how to take that and mix it in to what you what you doing, where you from, see, that's a lot of things niggas don't know how to do, too. Niggas will get there where you at, and niggas don't know how to go back to where they from. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it it sure. takes a motherfucker to get there and be like, okay, now I understand how to do this. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is what I need to do, because everybody's vision, the path is different. Everybody understanding the perception of shit is different. What you're supposed to do is different from what I'm supposed to do. Yes, sometimes run yeah. parallel, yeah. sometimes it fucking don't run parallel. That's a fact. You see what I'm saying? So, But it, this, like I said, it's a whole nother fucking... There's a whole the people that they probably look at us like, man, the fuck these niggas talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 like, what yeah, the yeah. fuck these niggas are talking about? Yeah. No, you come back out that motherfucker. Come back out. What is your mind frame and what is your vision from here? What I understood when I came back out was, boy, we fucking music up. Like, music traditionally, especially with black people, has always been about melody. Like, singing is a birthright of sure. a black person. And then we got into this place where we thought it was lame to do it. Like we got that hardened that we thought it was corny to be singing, especially singing to some girls. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So R&B shit, shit lame. You know what I'm saying? Like now it's all street, now it's all violence, now it's all selling drugs. When as soon as you get home, you up under that girl. You see what I'm saying? So it just ain't. And y'all listen to R&B music. You feel what I'm saying? So it just cap. Like it's just really like the rap shit as it is. As it was then, as it is now, it's a lot of it's cap, and it's just what it is. That's sure. a fact, and everybody knows it too, though. Talk to them. Yeah. So with that being said, and they cool with it. Yeah, yeah, they cool with it. <laughs> so now you're right. So then when I came back, I'm like, nah, I want to feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, and what I realized was singing feel good. It's not just about what you hear out of my voice when I'm actually singing and feel good. Why you think you go in the shower and sing? The frequencies, bro. That's what you already know. It's the frequencies, it's the frequency. bro. It's Why the you frequencies. Think you go in the shower and sing because it, it it's making you feel a way. You feeling good in that shower? You ain't in the shower rapping like that. You in the shower singing for real. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, I went on YouTube and I taught myself how to sing. I looked up singing lessons and I just did it every day, every day, and I got better every day, every day to the point where I went to an actual. Uh, singing um, instructor, singing coach, and they're like, "Oh, who you been training with? YouTube." <laughs> I was just gonna say that YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> what did you yeah. say? <laughs> the, and then, but and my partner over here, he can attest to this. When he, when he, this is my business partner right there. So when he when he first heard about me, I was on that street music, and Sud brought me to him. He's like, "Man, I can't get into it right now. You know what I'm saying? I can't I can't mix it up with you right now. I'm, I'm doing some other things. This that, and the third. When I came back, I'm singing now. My music way different. I'm an artist, artist. It's called return to artist. So I'm, there's no limits on what I'm trying to do artistically. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking about music from from here. I ain't thinking about it from here 
or just, you know, trying to make niggas be like, oh, he the hardest nigga. And I want you, when you listen to my music, you remember when you used to listen to, like, Michael Jackson? Mm -hmm. It make you want to dance. It's that frequency, dog. That's it's what you feel what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like, it make you want to dance. That's the only thing I know how to explain it. You just got to yeah. understand it. You just got to understand that wave, and you just... I, I, Niggas know when I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't give a fuck how hard a nigga say he is when he was small and Michael Jackson shit coming on, his ass was fucking dancing. Then you gotta tell me, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to say that's what it is. I'm probably one of the biggest gangsters in the city, bro. I made yeah. a career off dancing. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I understand. Yeah, that's I my totally point. understand. So it's in it's in us different than all this other shit that we acting like is in us. Mm -hmm. That the music shit on that level is in us. It's it's buried in us. You talking about Africa, where it goes back to that is our nature. Rhythm and music is our language. You see what I'm saying? That's how we communicate. That's how we express ourselves. So with that being said, taught myself the same, put it in that. That man heard it. He was in there. Oh, now nah, let's go. You see yeah, what I'm saying? saying? Yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, now nah, this is what, because everybody was doing that other shit. So it don't yeah. matter how good at it I was, mm -hmm. it still wasn't. The essence, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, so, it has to be something different. But you coming from here makes it different. This exactly. is what this is what makes it different. You know what I'm saying? It ain't the sound, it ain't what I'm saying. It's the passion. That's why nigga like Rod Wave. I ain't yeah. know what the motherfucker's saying. You can feel that shit when he's saying that shit. You can feel it. He ain't playing. He ain't rapping this shit just to be just yeah. rapping this shit. The shit real. You can feel it. It's yeah, a difference. Yeah, you see what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I said, that that was just different. Boom. Now get on that shit right there. You know what I'm saying? As you come back, what was your first aha moment from the new experience? I I had a song called Benita. I remixed Benita Applebaum. Uh, I called it Benita Applebaum 2013. And when I did that, everybody was just like, whoa, like, well, he came different. Like, he's telling stories now. He rapping, telling stories before the story was about hustling, not a story about just an experience. You know, and mm -hmm. it just made it just made the music relatable. And every year from then, I had a record on the radio. And that was very different than my other experience. Where I was turning up, I was piping up, you know what I'm saying? Like, things was going was going good, but, you know, now it's like, oh, he's ready now. I ain't that you, I'm going to tell you, it ain't that you didn't necessarily ready. You understand your path. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like walking in the woods, nigga. And goddamn, it's like walking in the woods, nigga, and nigga done already, kush, kush, kush. And mm -hmm. you and with the hatchet already, and you yeah, already yeah, see the, the dirt, and the dirt see. you already yeah. see it already. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? At first, you was just walking through that motherfucker trying to goddamn make a way. Yeah, when you came back out. That shit, the path was different. It's like oh, now we are gonna go up this way right here. Yeah, now I can now see we're it gonna clear. go around this way right here. Yeah, that enabled you to that, that enabled you to to be able to receive all the blessings that that was in your path. Absolutely. You know what? Let me grab this off this tree. Let me grab mm -hmm. this off right here. Niggas can't see that path. Niggas is lost. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, like I tell a lot of niggas, if you don't have a spiritual connection, a spiritual connection anyway, and spiritual connection comes in all forms. Some people find it through Christianity. Some people find it through Muslim. Some people find it through the Buddhism, all type of different stuff. I should say find a spiritual connection. It ain't about the religion. Religion is just a message. Mm -hmm. You can find a message in anything. I find a message from the joint store. You right now. Nah, it's a fact. I'd be like, yeah. you know what? But that's some smart ass shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why I just look at books at. You know what I'm saying? But I just think that when you find that connection, it guides you. It guides you. And it makes shit easier for you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it just shows you what you're supposed to be doing. That's why the, the radio shit, and I bet you was like, when it was happening, I bet you were surprised by it. And kind of where you were one, you was like, I already kind of knew this shit, though. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but I mean, you know, because inside of us, man, there's something that's always guiding us. That's always letting us know that we have greatness. What our greatness is. The fact that we can achieve it. And it's our frustration when we can't get there. That's what make us frustrated because we know that we great, but we don't know how to get to our greatness. You see what I'm saying? And I found that for me through that, I was able to access that. You know, I was able to touch that. And you know that it's been over ever since. And now it's just being, it ain't about me knowing it. I know it. People around my way know it. Even like Plug, he know it. You know, and now it's just about the world finding out. No, oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Twin, what's going on? Uh, what projects you do? You got any projects out now, or you got any projects you're working on? What's the newest shit you going to got going on right now? Oh, uh, I just put out a song called Winner, and Winner's been doing real good. You know what I'm saying? We've got like three hundred thousand streams. Um, got a bunch of radio stations, and it really what's more important is the fans reacting to it. Like the ladies really reacting to it. Like my music now is just full time player. Like. It's for it's for the women. Be a Bellamy music, you know. But see, it's like this though. 
it's kind of like it's for the women, but it got that bop to it, so the players really like it. At the same you understand time. how to come from your perspective, though. You yeah. know what you want, but you don't understand how to come from your perspective. I think that's I think that's a great balance because yeah. I don't like you say you made a lot of goddamn sense. No matter, it don't fucking matter what. A nigga do in the streets when he leave. Yeah. You going up home and you being up on the. Yeah, you, you feel what I'm me? Yeah, you, hey, what baby, it is. you it's got there. You understand? You get passive. Yeah, you feel exactly. me? Exactly. Like that's where they gonna be. So niggas gonna always connect with that. With that right there. That's that's just that shit smart. It's just period. Yeah. That's yeah. what they did. That shit just smart as a motherfucker, dog. Yeah, in the weird. videos you got out, you doing? Uh, you did video for it yet? No, no, no. We will though. Like we we actually about to shoot uh, a new video coming in about uh, a couple weeks. You know what I mean? So. Really, right now, man, it's just about expanding the fan base and building exposure. You know, that's that's why I'm at right now. Like, in my area, like, everybody know. But, you know, in order for it to grow outside of that, we got to move around. We got to expose people to it, you know. Like, especially in this game, like, people don't really have real fans, in my opinion. You got the fly-by-night ones. You know, you sure. interested on social media. You know, you dancing and and you shucking and jiving and whatnot, and then they they check in. And shit. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So they they want to follow just to see the silly shit you gonna do, and then if you don't keep doing the silly shit, they gone. They gone. And if you keep doing the silly shit, a lot of time they gone. Okay, I'm done. Watch yeah, this nigga yeah, do silly, silly shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It ain't Organic. real. Yeah, exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So it ain't real. So what we trying to do is move around and generate real fans. Cause the one thing I know is when people tap in with my music. Like you hear what that man said. I ain't even seen that man in years, but he remembers. For sure, he because sure when you did. when when we meet, that's it's always a memorable experience. My story memorable and my music memorable. You see what I'm saying? So, you know that's why now it's just about me moving around, connecting those dots. When last you talked? When last time you been to China? You talked to him? Oh, well, just interesting. You say that, man. My my teacher passed away about four years ago now. But I still talk to the brother students. But the last time I talked to one of the brother students was probably like a year and a half ago. Oh, no, you done brought me back to it. I got them fat. What the <laughs> fuck he was doing? <laughs> yeah, so but dude was doing a lot of things, man. One of the things he did was he was able to set a piece of paper on fire just by laying his hand next to it, you know. And, of course, to a lot of people, they're like, boy, that shit fake as hell, right? That's just what you automatically going to think. So you like, how does that happen? But if you think about an electric eel, how does an electric eel produce electricity? It has to use its glandular system to do that. But it's no different than right now your heart beating and it's producing electricity. Your nervous system is functioning off of electricity. So if you learn how to focus your mind, you can control these things, you can produce it. Our bodies even are always giving off a certain amount of electricity. So depending on what's going on, if you're in anger, it's energy. So if you're angry, you pr you give off a lot more of it. You know what I'm saying? So this energy can be utilized. It can be produced. But you got to know how to tap into that. And that's something that, you know, I went out there to learn. So that, that would fuck you up. He, he did that shit with the fire. Yeah, and I was you like, like, hold on, what the fuck? Yeah. What the goddamn moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You learned the fire? I can't, I can't produce the fire, but I learned the techniques to do it, and I was already experiencing the energy internally, you know. So, yeah, you know. It's, it's, you make the motherfucker smoke? Nah. <laughs> God, nah damn, nah, no, you nah, got to nah, practice some more, dog. Yeah, yeah. You got to practice, dog. I mean, yeah. Well, I, I mean, want to need you. You got to like these blunts and shit. I mean, you know. There ain't no fire no more. God damn, look, man. Light like that motherfucker it's a, up. It's a whole T-Go, man. Here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> T-Go, wake up, man. Light like that motherfucker real quick, bro. <laughs> Yeah, she. Man. but you know that's a whole nother conversation though. You know, I got a I got a IG page dedicated just to things like that. You know, with a, with a hell of a lot of followers. You know, so that's game I like to kick. You know, for me it's just like I, I love music. Music is a passion of mine. Music is something I'm always gonna do, whether it's for you or for myself. You see what I'm saying? But the you want a nigga show that you want you want to share that shit with a nigga. Yeah, you want to experience that shit. Though. But that's but that's spiritual. You gonna do podcast? Yeah, no, no, this, it, that's coming. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, like the spirituality thing, like that's natural. Like, like for me, it's about helping a nigga that was like me that wasn't even trying to see that shit at one point. You know, and, and cause when when you can when a nigga can relate to you, then you can say something to them and they listen. You know what I'm saying? When sure. when somebody tell you something but they don't feel like they can relate to your experience, they're not trying to hear it. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So nah, that's what it's about sure. for me, man. You know, like in. In other cultures, in India, China, all these people, all these places, they got spirituality. Here it's just religion. It ain't really no spirituality like that. So no, that's sure. why, that's why you know, our presence is important in a lot of people's lives. 
Yeah, my partner tell you, like, I'm not pushy about my spirituality, though. We'll talk about it. You know, I might present it, but if that ain't what you want, we ain't never going to talk about yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? It's just about, look, you know, if I see somebody trying to find themselves, you know what I'm saying? Then I'm gonna do everything in my power. Yeah, to you do gonna that. give him? You gonna give him? Give him? Give him a guy? Exactly. You gonna give me a guy? That's well, you it. ever been to Europe, right? Yeah. What'd you say? You ever been to Europe, right? Uh, uh-uh, uh, I have not. Hey, man, I go back to the west. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That bitch some good shit. That bitch some other shit. Some good, some more good shit. Yeah, nah, for sure. You know, you know a lot of people want me to tap into E5 and whatnot, but you know, at the end of the day, like. You gotta similar. call you, man. You gotta yeah, be yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. for me, no matter what you're doing spiritually, you, you have to be called. Yeah, that's that's my point. That's period. Dog. Yeah, that's you know my what I'm point. saying. Everybody's yeah. calling is different, dog. It's just that's just what it is. That's the absolute you know fact. For sure. Tell everybody where they can follow you. Oh uh, man, you know I'm on all social media platforms. T I G O B M U S I C T O B Music. You know it's, it's easy. Yeah. All platforms, all so platforms. Uh, everything. All YouTube, all TikTok, 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 TikTok too. Yeah. Would you be doing shit on TikTok? Bro, I ain't gonna hold you. No, I post on TikTok, posts that I did from other stuff, but you not finna see me dancing. Not like that. You don't be doing the singing videos and shit. You don't yeah, be doing nah, your I'm own shit and shit. Because that that's my point. Like, if I did a like for instance, I'll do something like kind of like a, a trailer video doing my own music type yeah. stuff. But you know how a lot of people is today. They trying to get attention. So if there's like a new trend, they gonna do the little dance to the trend oh, and whatnot. God, I ain't finna do none of that, bro. I be Not asking everybody that. trying to see what they do. I be trying to figure out what I could do. I be trying to work the TikTok, but I, like you said, I, I don't, I, I don't see, know. See, that's, and that's what I'm saying. Make it disingenuous for me, for somebody like me. You know what I'm saying? Because now I'm doing it to try and get attention. You see what yeah. I'm saying? And that that's not yeah. who I it am. It ain't coming from here no more. It's not coming from here yeah. no more. You know if what it I'm saying? If it happens, it's going to happen how it need to happen. Yeah, because my music coming from here. Yeah. But that social media... It's going to take my Morocco. It's, it's, it's going to take me off. I, nah. it, it do that. Yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying? Oh, I'm trying to force this so that these people will look my way. Like, it don't feel like God want me to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It might be hard for folk to understand, but it just don't feel right to me. It's a feeling, bro. Yeah. Might, your path might not be doing music right now. This path might be leading you to meet this person to take you. You which, never know it what might, it's it might be. Do. Yeah, like you, you know, know what I'm saying. You, you just have to keep taking do. your steps. That, that's all I Everybody do. Everybody else might keep running fast. You might be like, hey, that nigga running fast, but you just got to keep taking your steps and be cool with the step that you take. That's all. You know what I'm saying? And, and I am. Nah, for you know sure, what I'm saying? I've always been that way. I am. Nah, for sure, for sure. Man, I want to say appreciate you taking your time out, come telling that story, interesting shit. Yeah, nah, for real. You know what I'm saying? You got me thinking. I want to go look at some shit on YouTube now. I'm like that too. I look up everything on YouTube. Wait, soon we get off here, I'm going to let you look at the video. Yeah. I'm going to let you I check it wait. out. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. It ain't nothing but eight look. minutes long. We'll watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't wait that motherfucker for real. <laughs> I like all that type of shit, man. Yeah. Man, with that being said, you already know, man. It's your boy Parlay, live from Digital House Studios. And we're in the apartment with Parlay. Meet me in the apartments.